Hi there. Today I want to talk about the Yishin teapots. Uh, if you are watching this video and uh, you are into Gong Fu Cha or just into tea culture in general, you probably heard about uh, Yishin teapots, about Yishin clay, and you either own a teapot made of Yishin clay or you wanted to get one. So uh, I want to uh, explore this subject. Uh, we're gonna talk about what is Yishin clay, uh, why uh, it is so praised, and uh, how to choose a teapot that is right for you. So let's get into the subject of Yishin clay and Yishin teapots. To start, I want to apologize for my pronunciation of some of uh, Chinese terms. A Chinese language is not my native tongue, so please forgive me if I mispronounce something. And also, I want to uh, make a disclaimer. I know how touchy this subject uh, is for some people, how serious some people take it, how close to heart they take uh, the subject of Yishin teapots. So I want to say that uh, I'm not an expert in Yishin clays. I'm not a scholar of Yishin clays. Uh, everything I'm gonna say is based on my personal knowledge and my personal understanding uh, of this subject and based on my personal experience which is uh, you know uh, quite some years and please uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt uh, don't just blindly believe me uh, double check uh, the information that I give you So what is Yishin clay? Uh, Yishin clay comes from Yishin city uh, in Jiangsu province, which is situated in the delta of Yangtze river. And uh, Yishin clay is rich in uh, iron uh, oxide, in kaolin, in mica, in quartz, and other minerals. And uh, this unique composition of the clay is uh, what makes it so special and also uh, the porosity of the clay its air permeability the way it interacts with tea when it's made in the form of teapots you know other teaware like gaiwans and teacups and so on and uh, also another quality that is very important for yishin clay is uh, its uh, heat retention properties so um, this is, you know, that uh, what makes Yishin clay so uh, sought for. And um, there are different types of Yishin clay. Yishin uh, is a, or Zisha is an umbrella name for different types of Yishin clay. And that have, each one of them has a different composition and uh, slightly different properties. So one of the most famous one is Zini clay, Zini Yishin clay. So uh, this is Zini teapot. Uh, you see it's of a purple color. Uh, Zini uh, means purple clay. And uh, this is one of the most famous one and uh, one of the most uh, popular ones. And this one is of reddish color. Uh, it's called Juni. Uh, which means red clay. So Juni is like reddish, uh, orangey hue, uh, you know, also a very famous uh, Yishin clay type. And this teapot that is of yellow color is made of Duani clay. And Duani clay can be of different hues, but uh, the most common one uh, is yellow and you have to understand that all, all of these clays uh, they take the color after the firing in their original form uh, they not necessarily of these colors and there are other types of uh, Yishin clay of Zisha that are just uh, less common or uh, um, more rare you know like uh, because of that more expensive and less popular uh, for example, there is Luni, it's a green clay, or there is Hongni, 
uh, it's like more of a reddish color. It's actually very hard to distinguish from uh, Juni that I showed you earlier. Uh, but I'm just showing it for the purpose of uh, knowing what are the different clays. Uh, like if you see this teapot, it's of a black color. It's uh, called Haney. But uh, as I said, it's like a Haney is a much more rare clay. So it's only used for decorative purposes. Inside it is also purple. Uh, it is a, a zini clay inside. So just for the purpose of this video, uh, as an introduction to Yishin clays, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the three main types that are most common. is zini, purple clay, uh, hongni, uh, and uh, juni is a red clay, and uh, duani, which is a yellow clay. So now that we covered what are Yishin clays, uh, let's uh, jump straight to the main controversy about this clay. So what is the main controversy? Uh, if you made a research about Yishin teapots or asked about Yishin teapots uh, in the tea community, you probably heard someone must have mentioned, you know, commented that it is now impossible to find a genuine original Yishin teapot, that all the Yishin clays that are now on the market are fakes, or the real ones should cost an arm and a leg, and, uh, you know, if it's under thousands of dollars, don't even bother buying a Yishin teapot. Well, this is not exactly the truth. So let's just uh, discuss it and uh, see what the real uh, state of things is. So originally, Yishin clay comes from the original uh, four locations. It's uh, four mountains around Yishin city, uh, such as Benshan or uh, Huang Longshan and the other two. So uh, Yishin clay became very, very popular recently. And uh, because of the rise of the popularity, uh, everybody, you know, wanted to get these teapots, you know, the market just exploded. And in 2005, Chinese government restricted uh, the development of this original ores of, uh, of those mines uh, in the original locations. Um, so basically what happened? Uh, because of that, many people saying that now it is impossible to get uh, teapots of this original clays. Uh, why it is not true? Because uh, there are literally tons uh, of this original clay uh, stored now in Yixing town, in Yixing city. Uh, different studios, uh, they uh, stored like tons of 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 this original clay. Only like revered masters with established names uh, will use these clays and of course it will commence a higher price. Uh, also there is still some illegal uh, mining still going on and most importantly now that the original locations are closed they started to developing uh, ores from nearby locations. Uh, we can argue whether the nearby locations are as good as the ores from these nearby locations are as good as the original ores. Uh, maybe they're a little bit inferior. Uh, maybe uh, they are on par with the original ores. Uh, the matter of fact is, these ores, you know, even though the the new ores, so to say, uh, they're still rich in iron oxide in kaolin, in mica, in quartz, in other elements, they still uh, have good heat uh, retention properties and uh, porosity and so on and so forth. So it is still better than mines, you know, from elsewhere. Uh, so having said that, there are still plenty of good and affordable Yixing teapots on the market. First of all, Yishin clay is not very malleable. And uh, because of that, it cannot be the teapot, cannot be uh, will thrown. It has to be built, you know, by hand or with the use of mold. 
Uh, so if you look at the teapot and you see circular uh, traces, you know, that sh show that uh, teapot was made on a wheel, then uh, it is not a good sign. Uh, you can tell that this teapot is probably either, it's not a, a genuine uh, Yishin clay or it's an altered, heavily altered Yishin clay. Uh, another sign is a white spots throughout the teapot. If you look at the teapot closer, uh, you will see uh, white dots here and there. And uh, these white dots, these are the signs of mica, of presence of mica that we discussed, one of the minerals uh, present in the clay. Uh, another sign is black dots. Black dots is the sign of iron. Uh, if you remember, I said that Yishin clay uh, is rich in iron oxide. So if you see black spots here and there, it is also a good sign of uh, genuine Yishin clay. But make sure that there are not too many of them, because if there are too many of those black spots, it's probably a sign of a low quality uh, Yishin clay. Uh, also, another thing is that uh, the surface of Yishin clay is not very smooth, is not even. It is full of little bumps uh, and uh, uh, like holes, you know, like uh, dents, so to say. And uh, this is a sign of uh, when the teapot, when the uh, ore is, uh, when the clay is being fired, uh, uh, a shrinkage occurs and uh, because of this shrinkage you know some of the uh, elements you know they come on the surface and some jump out some getting uh, uh, dented in so the surface of Yishin clay is uh, not very uh, smooth it's like a sandy surface um, Another sign, of course, is the price. Uh, if the price is too cheap, if it's like, you know, below $50, uh, you have to understand this. We discussed uh, in the previous chapter that uh, Yishin clay is uh, uh, sought for. So, and uh, original mines are being closed and now they're developing uh, mines around it, you know, like uh, uh, deposits around it. So, uh, you know, there is a limited amount of this clay in nature. So it doesn't come for too cheap. And of course, there are different types of teapots. There are fully handmade teapots that uh, cost more money. There are fully handmade teapots from original ores that cost a crazy amount of money. Uh, there are uh, half handmade teapots that we're gonna discuss later, uh, made of uh, new ores uh, that are reasonably, reasonably priced. But if the price goes too low, uh, it is not a good sign uh, of uh, for Yishin clay. So now we come to another hot topic uh, within the topic of Yishin clays. It's a handmade teapot versus half handmade teapot and factory made teapots. So as we already established, uh, Yishin clay is not very malleable. So you cannot throw it on a wheel. You, uh, you cannot just pour it into forms, you know, into slip casts and make a teapot. So uh, that leaves basically uh, two main options and if you have such a slip casted teapot it means that the clay was heavily uh, altered and that there is a very little of the original Yishin clay there are different clays uh, you know uh, that take uh, most uh, of that mix so we're not gonna be talking about those ones uh, so we left with pretty much two choices uh, fully handmade versus half handmade so fully handmade teapot, it means uh, what it sounds, that the teapot is made from the start to the end fully by hands. Uh, it requires a lot of attention, a lot of attention to details, uh, a lot of work, you know, and uh, mastery and so on and so forth. 
and sometimes a master can make only one teapot a day which of course commands a higher price for example like this is a good example of a fully handmade teapot uh, you can see how many details uh, it made of two clays uh, zini and duani and this is also like some of the zini clay around there is no paint used for it so this is you know this intricate teapot is fully handmade and uh, you know the price is of course higher uh, than of similar teapots that uh, don't have so many intricate details and uh, this teapot for example is also fully handmade and these two teapots are half handmade doesn't mean that they any inferior and what does it mean have handmade teapot uh, basically what it means is that the studio or the master if he works by himself but usually you know they work on the umbrella of a studio the studio creates a mold and then uh, it uh, shapes uh, this teapot within this mold and then it attaches the spout and the handle uh, you know other details to the uh, to this half handmade you know like body of the teapot uh, it does require much lesser time to make such teapots you can probably make like you know 10 or 20 of them a day but to create a mold takes a lot of time and dedication and mastery and then to assemble it all together also takes knowledge and a certain uh, you know amount of expertise and experience it's not a simple task either and uh, to create a mold sometimes it takes months to create a good mold because it has to be perfect it has to be used many many times and with this we achieve much more precision so we're going to be talking about some other qualities of teapot such as like uh, how tightly uh, the lid sits so in this half handmade teapot the lid sits like perfectly fine and here the lid sits perfectly fine on this fully handmade teapot the lid is wobbly a little you know because it is really hard to reach a perfection when you're making a fully handmade teapot and uh, the main difference is uh, in its qualities in all the other qualities that we also gonna discuss uh, they may not differ that much uh, so uh, the main difference is I would say mainly for collectors that are looking for something uh, more special than uh, you know just a utilitarian uh, use of a teapot so they looking for some value uh, beyond uh, the mere physical qualities of teapot otherwise I would say it doesn't make a huge difference uh, so another one that I want to mention is uh, factory made teapots uh, factory made teapots are uh, pretty much the same as uh, teapots made uh, with the use of a mold however instead of the hand that shapes a teapot uh, on the mold they use like a machine operating thing it's like a, a metal thing that imitates a hand of a master uh, that uh, spreads the clay you know around the mold that shapes the body so uh, this is what we call a factory made teapot so for factory made teapots uh, they rarely use good clay uh, uh, to make them once again it doesn't have to be like a fake clay it doesn't have to be altered clay but there are different grades of uh, Yishin clay and good clay is usually reserved the best clay is usually reserved for really good masters you know like uh, regular quality clay for regular masters and lower uh, and clay is used for factory teapots for novices for practicing and so on and so forth so how to tell apart a fully handmade teapot uh, from a half handmade teapot 
well it's not so easy but uh, there are few pointers that I would like to give so if you look inside of a teapot uh, if you look inside of a handmade teapot that you know what is you've been told is a handmade teapot uh, you have to look uh, basically when you uh, build a teapot you have to make uh, when you start building the body you have to make uh, two ends meet and there is going to be like a stitch in between and it's very hard to mask it so where the spout is you look on the inside of the teapot and i cannot show it on the video but there will be like a sign you know where the two ends meet you can find this sign over there so that's one way to tell them apart another way to tell them apart is if you look at the half handmade teapot you will see uh, signs and scratches you know of because when you build it against the mold uh, you have to spread the clay you know in a certain way so you will see the signs uh, of alteration like inside of the teapot this is a good thing uh, uh, to, to, to find uh, also another one is uh, you should look for symmetry so uh, when the mold is made as I said the mold is being prepared for months so it's easier to make like a completely like a fully symmetrical teapot uh, with a handmade teapot you will probably see some differences some unevenness you know the tiniest ones uh, once again you need to have like a trained eye to, to spot those and you have to keep in mind that most of these signs uh, they can be fake nowadays because uh, you know the market for this teapot is so vibrant and there is so much demand for Yishin teapot that uh, uh, you know irresponsible sellers uh, and makers they may hide and they may go into a great length you know to hide those signs and fake one for another so just keep that in mind uh, the best one uh, the best criteria i would say would be the reputation of a vendor that you buy for, from so how to choose a yishin teapot that is right for you well to answer this question first of all we have to determine uh, what do you need a Yishin teapot for uh, if you go to once again to like tea communities you know tea forums someone will always say you must have a Yishin teapot why because Yishin teapot uh, can alter taste of tea uh, it can transform it uh, but the trick is that in some cases it can positively transform it make it into something better into something tastier and in some cases it can actually uh, negatively affect the taste of tea so let's uh, look into it and see what Yishin teapot is good for and what is not so I want to start with saying that before you try a tea a new tea uh, in Yishin teapot I think it's always best to try it in a neutral ware like porcelain for for example because porcelain uh, does not affect taste of tea does not alter it in any way and in order to understand how Yishin tea ware alters the taste of your tea whether it benefits it or whether it doesn't benefit it first of all you have to establish the base you have to know what the neutral taste of the tea is uh, you have to get familiar with the tea first so i'm a big advocate of uh, trying a new tea always for the first few times in a neutral teaware in porcelain once you establish the base once you know what the tea is supposed to taste like uh, you can experiment brewing into different teawares 
and see uh, the difference that it makes. And also it is always good to compare them side by side. Let's say you have a, a porcelain, you know, guy one on the left and Yixing teapot on the right and you brew the same tea with the same parameters side by side and you compare and then you can tell uh, the difference uh, between the two methods. So now that we said that, uh, there are, as you remember, we spoke earlier, we said er earlier that there are different types of uh, Yishin clay. So let's start with Zini. So Zini, uh, purple clay, is uh, the most porous one uh, and uh, it has good air permeability and has good uh, heat or retention properties. So this tea will alter the taste the most. And what it does because of its porosity and because of its mineral content, uh, it rounds the taste by muting down high notes, bright notes. So if you like teas that has uh, that have uh, like high notes and you like the like sharpness, you like the uh, you know stringency, you like uh, you know the zinc, uh, then maybe Zini teapot is not right for those teas because it will mute them down, it will round uh, the taste. Uh, so Juni teapot. Uh, has medium to low porosity and also good heat retention properties. All of Yishin clays, they have a good heat return, retention properties. So Juni, tea, uh, Juni clay uh, is more suitable for those teas that uh, require higher temperatures, but you don't want to mute down uh, those uh, high notes. And Duani, is like somewhere in the middle it has a medium porosity uh, also good heat retention properties and uh, it's like a medium choice between the two i would say but as i just said all of yishin clays they have good heat retention properties what does it mean it means that if you put tea in it and you put hot water in it uh, it will help to keep the high temperature uh, at the same level. So it will help to brew the teas that require high temperatures. But when we talk about green teas, white teas, yellow teas, uh, they are usually much more tender and they don't need such high temperatures. High temperatures will bring out tannins from these teas and it will spoil the taste uh, it will make them too bitter. Uh, so maybe, you know, this teas, it will overcook this teas. So maybe uh, Yishin uh, clay is not good for those teas. Uh, this is the general, you know, uh, general understanding, general, general agreement. So those teas are usually brewed in porcelain teaware or in teaware that doesn't uh, hold the heat as well. Also, it's good to remember that Yixing is not the only good clay on the market. Uh, there are other great clays out there, uh, such as, from, uh, for example, uh, Nishin clay from Guangxi, or Jianshui from Yunnan, or Chaozhou clay uh, from uh, Guangdong. And these are all great clays that uh, also have good qualities, that also rich in minerals and have different uh, levels of porosity and uh, different uh, aesthetical qualities and heat retention qualities and so on and so forth. Uh, for example, uh, this is Chaozhou teapot uh, from Chaozhou clay from Guangdong. This is the birthplace of Gongfu Cha and the birthplace of Dansong Oolongs and uh, many people say and I agree with them that it pairs very well from Dansong Oolongs uh, being uh, from the same soil you know that uh, those teas come from 
and uh, this is for example uh, Zhang Shui uh, clay guy one I also love it and uh, it brews very well with shampoo airs in my opinion mm. so yeah there are different clays to consider other than Yixin clay so as we discussed earlier, when you choose a teapot, uh, you want to make sure that uh, it will fit well with your teas. And as we discussed earlier, different clays, they have uh, different qualities and different porosity. And uh, because of that, they interact with teas differently. So another factor that is uh, quite important is the level of firing so the higher is the heat the higher is the level of firing the less porous clay becomes so how to check what is the firing level of your uh, teapot is by the sound uh, that it makes the higher the pitch is the higher the level of firing so when you click you take a lid and very carefully you hit it against the teapot and the higher the pitch the higher is the level of firing the lower is the porosity uh, the lower is the porosity yes so you see in this one the pitch is lower so this one is will be more porous than this one Another thing that you want to pay attention to is the shape of the teapot. So you want to make sure that teapot has ample uh, space for the leaves uh, to unfurl, you know, to, to present themselves. So, you know, let's say for rolled oolongs, like a more rounded body uh, would be better, you know, than flat teapots, uh, like for example, like uh, this one you know there are teapots that even flatter so you want to pay attention to the shape of the body as well if you are a collector uh, you'll be paying attention to the symmetry and uh, to the air tightness because air tightness uh, also uh, means how the teapot will behave you know when you decant water whether it's gonna drip or not and how good it retains heat so like this teapot if you try to wiggle the lid you know it doesn't wobble it just sits very tightly this one doesn't wobble very tightly this one will wobble a little all right but if you ask me, uh, all of these, uh, it doesn't really matter much because the changes that it's gonna make to your tea are negligible and they're mostly like aesthetical. Uh, so the most important quality uh, of, of a teapot, of a teapot, is the quality of the clay. And this is what you have to pay attention uh, the most. Uh, another thing is the jet head and uh, the speed of pour. So, uh, you probably have seen videos on YouTube uh, when uh, somebody's comparing good quality shinty pot to a bad one. They decant water from really high, you know, and uh, whether uh, the jet you know breaks or doesn't break make sound doesn't make sound uh, they determine you know whether the teapot is good or not uh, it does show the level of mastery uh, of a tea maker of a teapot maker uh, but does it have like a real effect on tea brewing qualities uh, i don't think so uh, the main point of this consistency of the head and uh, you know whether it breaks or not is the pressure that it applies uh, when it decanting water and when it matters is when you pour it from a kettle into a teapot on the leaves so uh, because you want to you know like if you 
uh, brewing something like pu'er, you know, something with more like coarse uh, leaves that need some pressure for the water in, to break into them and to uh, uh, get all the substances out of the leaf. Then you need this pressure. So it matters when you go from a kettle into a teapot. But does it really matter when you go from a teapot uh, into a Gong Dao Bay? Uh, not really. I don't think it matters a lot. But what really matters is the speed of the pour. And I think this is the second most important quality of a teapot after the quality of clay. So the speed of pour means how fast you can decant your teapot, how well you can control the speed with which uh, you're decanting water or tea. Uh, why it matters? Because if you have like a small teapot, it doesn't uh, matter much. Like for example, this teapot is 110 millimeter. Uh, you know, it, I cannot say it has like a huge impact uh, how fast it pours. But for this teapot, for example, which is 200 milliliters, it matters because while you're still pouring water, uh, while you're still decanting it, uh, tea leaves inside are still, they continue to brew. So the faster, the faster you can decant, uh, the better it is for the tea, the more control you have over tea. So this has like a very good practical uh, use, this quality. So I would say that the most important two qualities uh, in any teapot are quality of clay, the way it interacts with your tea, the way it transforms your tea, the way it affects your tea, and the speed of pour. Uh, these two qualities are indispensable. They're like the most uh, the, the most essential ones. And here we come to the last uh, chapter and uh, to the last controversial subject. Uh, which tea uh, is best for your Yishin teapot and whether you should stick to only one tea uh, for each teapot, one type of tea for each teapot or uh, you can uh, uh, play with different teas. So here's my personal take on it. Uh, as one fellow uh, tea enthusiast said, uh, tea should choose a teapot. So there is no ready answer which tea will be best for uh, such and such yishing type of clay because every teapot is different based on its uh, shape based uh, on the level of firing based on the exact ore that was used uh, to make uh, you know this this clay so each clay is different each teapot is different and in order to figure out which tea fits it best you have to try brewing tea in it and see whether it benefits it or not and before you set your mind on which tea uh, fits your teapot best, I think it is totally fine to try different teas. Uh, just all you have to do is give it a very good rinse in between, you know, not using any detergents. Remember the clay is porous, so you don't want to use any detergents on it. Uh, you want to uh, use just hot water wash it with hot water thoroughly uh, you don't have to go crazy you know just a nice good rinse will do and in order for teapot as they say like zisha it has memory it remembers tea teas that it brews so in order for zisha uh, to accumulate this tea this taste you know of a particular type it usually takes years of constant brewing in this teapot and don't listen to those who say that you shouldn't be washing your teapot in between. Uh, always wash your teapot in between. But it takes years to develop this patina outside and on inside. And in between, there will be no harm if you try brewing various teas in it. Just remember never to brew herbal teas in it because herbal teas 
they usually have very strong oils uh, that will get into the pores and will be practically impossible to get rid of so don't use uh, those teas and I also don't recommend using uh, smoky lapsang suchong in particular uh, in, with a teapot that you haven't decided on if you decided to dedicate one teapot to smoky lapsang suchong just uh, brew it in it otherwise it may be tricky to get uh, rid of this uh, smoky smell as well so i hope that this video was useful and we'll try to uncover uh, more of it in depth in other videos and uh, leave comments and uh, if you're looking for a good uh, yishin teapot you can always visit our store link is in the description and we'll be happy to serve you thank you till next videos bye bye